Today's abridged scripture reading is from 1 Kings chapter 18, where we find the sons of Israel, along with the false prophets of the Baals and the Asherah, gathered at Mount Carmel under the order of King Ahab at the instruction of God's prophet Elijah. Verse 21. Then Elijah approached all the people and said, How long are you going to struggle with the two choices? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people did not answer him so much as a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left as a prophet of the Lord, while Baal's prophets are four hundred and fifty men. Now have them give us two oxen, and have them choose the one ox for themselves, and cut it up, and place it on the wood, but put no fire under it. And I will prepare the other ox, and lay it on the wood, and I will not put a fire under it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God who answers by fire, He is God. And all the people replied, That is a good idea. So Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose the one ox for yourselves, and prepare it first, since there are many of you, and call on the name of your God, but put no fire under the ox. Then they took the ox, which was given them, and they prepared it. And they called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, saying, O Baal, answer us. But there was no voice, and no one answered. When midday was past, they raved until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. But there was no voice, no one answered, and no one paid attention. Then Elijah repaired the altar of the Lord, which had been torn down, and he made a trench around the altar, large enough to hold two measures of seed. Then he laid out the wood, and he cut the ox in pieces, and placed it on the wood. And he said, Fill four large jars with water, and pour it on the burnt offering, and on the wood. And he said, Do it a second time. So they did it a second time. Then he said, Do it a third time. So they did it a third time. The water flowed around the altar, and he also filled the trench with water. Then, at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet approached and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, today let it be known that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Answer me, Lord, answer me, so that this people may know that you, Lord, are God, and that you have turned their heart back. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. When all the people saw this, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. God has given those of us who are believers the privilege of coming to Him with all our requests and concerns. And His Word tells us that the prayers of a righteous person can accomplish much. Isn't that what we all desire? Elijah is a good example of someone who prayed effectively. He entered into a spiritual conflict with Baal worshippers to prove to Israel that the Lord is the one true God. Elijah's petition was based on his knowledge of the Lord's supremacy and an understanding of His will. When the prophet prayed, God responded by powerfully answering the request. To have an effective prayer life, we must first be righteous through saving faith in Jesus Christ. Before redemption, we were sinners under God's condemnation. But in Christ, we're made new and declared righteous in His sight. For our petitions to be effectual, they must be in agreement with God's will. Getting to know our Heavenly Father's character and priorities is the key to a powerful prayer life. As we grow in our knowledge of Him, our requests will increasingly align with His plans.